how to break a GoPro map. Oh, that, actually, that's quite good. That's a good spot. That is a nice angle. Oh, yeah, good. Right. We like nice angles. Today, we are here and we're doing a board change. Corey's in the garage. This garage consumer unit is for an annex. So this is not the main consumer unit, but it's an annex consumer unit. Corey's busy ripping that out, putting a Hager RCBO board in. Corey just asked me something very interesting. What did you ask me, Corey? Jordan, I th believe the question I might have asked you was, um, where do, no, it wasn't that question. It was, <laughs> what, it was what on earth is this cable here? It's just a single core on earth, and I've, I've never seen that before in my life. It's like a, well, yeah, it's just, there's just one black core and earth. So you can tell, you can tell Corey's not a house basher, because when you've been doing house bashing as long as I have, then you would know what that is. It's single, it is single core and CPC cable, so it's like twin and earth, but with only one, uh, one wire and then CPC. And basically what they use it for is for strappers, for two-way switching often. So what they will do is run the permanent live to one end with a single core and earth cable and then they'll run I don't have that information. Go away Sorry, sir. And then they'll run a twin and earth in between the two switches and then another single core from this end. So say they might have done it that way, I'm not sure. No, it doesn't look like it goes into the consumer unit. So it's probably actually just um, permanent a, feed to it's a permanent neutral bar, the looks of it, it's going into the neutral bar. Oh okay. But I yeah. feel like that goes against every reg. Even, you know, like... Yeah, we wouldn't do it that way now. Magnetic effects. Because that's going to have a magnetic field on it and you've not got another one to counteract it. You know if I mean? it was going through a metal consumer unit by itself, then I guess it would be an issue. But it's not really. But it's just a weird way of doing it. That's yeah. just... It's, it's, it's very old, traditional wiring. Every day is a school day. I've learned something new. So that's what we love, though. Never seen that. Before. That's what this job's all about, is you learn something new every day. So what uh, Corey's going to smash this consumer unit out. We've got a sub meter there, which is a hideous uh, meter. Corey's going to change that to this nice new one because it's an annex that could be rented out. It's just a check meter, basically, so that they can monitor how much electricity the annex it itself is using. It's a bit of a mess, as you probably could have told by the state of it. So I was like, there's a meter here and a time clock. And just all this tut, like you've got cables coming into the board that are linked out, but the neutrals go into the neutral bar, but like the lives don't do anything, or the lines I should say don't do anything. So I'm not gonna lie, it's a little bit confusing, especially yeah, as we've already stated. I've never I've never actually come across that cable before. But then I'm only young, so I've got lots of time to come across cables like this. Um, I'm actually gonna have to bring those through the same entrance as well, because there's a reg. Um, to prevent what's called the ferromagnetic effect. Every cable um, or any conductor that has a current passing through it will have a magnetic field. Um, think or um, So that magnetic field will be cancelled out by the neutral so that together their total sum of magnetism would be zero. But if you remove one from the other, then uh, you can get heat, especially when you're going through a ferromagnetic enclosure like the metal consuming reason. So we're gonna have, I'm gonna try and bring them all through together. I'm basically just trying to figure out what the cables are actually doing. Because a few of them I've traced out and they're not doing anything. Like, I've, I don't know if you can see that big coil of cable there. Um, but they're circuits that I've just removed, basically. Um, the boost of clock. Because, yeah, as I'm following it around, I think they used to have night storage heaters in here or something. Um, but I don't wanna reconnect things that aren't needed. I want this consumer to kind of be clean. But um, we'll get to the bottom of it. National fans, what language should we start with? Should we start European? Portuguese? Todo bem. E olha que coisa. Um, Melinda Macheia de Graça. 
哎，来问你，那几遍几把啥？你好，你好嘛，我很我很高兴认识你。嗯、um, ，Hola， ¿cómo está？ 啊，是属于一个菲律宾啊。¿Cómo está？ ¿Cómo está po？ 嗯、um, ，¿quién ha ganado la con Michael Lalaka？ ¿Con ni chihuá？ ¿Arigato? ¿Mos Korean？ ¿Añón haseo？ Um, bonjour, bonjour, no. Right, that's looking all right, actually, Nathan. That's looking all right. What do you reckon? All oh, righty. What the plan is, what the Stanley plan is, I'm going to lid up this, end cap it, so that's like one nice solid little hunk of trunking lovingness. That's going to open up. Um, managed to get all the cables in there. So the plan is to have everything inside this this trunking because I didn't like all that cabled nonsense that was at the top and for the meter I've got to get an electricity meter on for the just to monitor what the annex is using so the plan is I'm going to put a piece of trunking underneath I'll probably do it from that way because this cable is quite short or maybe I could do it up there even might come into it and trunking around I don't know I, I kind of like the idea of having a piece of trunking butted up to there running right up to the wall and then we can bring this inside a piece of pipe into the top and then loop out and I'm going to put proper tails in rather than 10 mil because it's only got a 10 mil supply but I'm going to put proper tails the reason being we've got a meter we've got everything else say they've decided to split this annex off properly and um, I should probably ask Jordan before I say that I'm going to do it if Jordan agrees then I'm going to do it if they decide to split this annex off properly then the electricity board could literally just bosh onto those tails, they won't have to upgrade them, they could put a 100 amp fuse on them if I drop 25 mil tails out. So that's the plan, and it's getting there, but it's, I tell you what, it's a bit tricky. For a small board, it's really complicated. Like, none of the cables are labelled, and you've got loads of singles, which don't seem to make any sense. What I'm going to do, is I'm going to get everything dressed in to the board, or just above the board maybe, inside the trunk in, so that if I need to chop or block up or whatever, I can. Um, and I'll get my wonder lead, my R2 lead, and I'll just clamp onto that, go around to all the light fittings and touch all the lives and switch lives until I can find that. And I'll probably just have to bell out each cable. So, yeah, we'll work our way through that while well, Jordan's got the nice job. What do you think of that, huh? Sticking your young worker into the garage with all this mess while you have a nice little conduit install with a nice new cable. How do you sleep at night? Jordan, how do you sleep at night? Probably, probably quite well. And on a very well threaded cotton bed sheet, I'd imagine. But, um, very high thread count. <laughs> Meet the son of Sharon, the legend that is. He's just kindly come and dropped off some materials for you. Hi mum! <laughs> you wanted a shout out, you're getting one now. Yeah, loads of people. You're slowly meeting all the odd sands. It's not just me and Jordan. There's actually got Dan, Chris, and a few other nice lads who go around doing work. So that would be a good opportunity to meet them. Meet them. He does a lot of our quoting and things as well. Yeah, this is one of the jobs that I quoted. So I'm hoping it's going okay today. I'm sure I'll hear about it if it doesn't. So <laughs> today is the 29th, which means no, it's the 30th, which means yesterday lockdown eased a little bit which is great, but also, bear in mind there's a lot of people that are going to be anxious about lockdown ending, which might sound crazy, but I'm also, I'm kind of on their wavelength, because like, my whole excuse for being slightly out of shape during the whole of lockdown, has been like, well the gyms are closed, the gyms are closed, you know, but when the gyms are open, I'm literally going to lose all excuses, so that gives a lot of anxiety, so bear that in mind people. You've got to get it in where you can, people. Lockdown's ending. Summer's going to be coming, and my summer body is not ready. So, you know, you got to do what you got to do. Get that pump on. What's happening? Right, so, I am installing the tails into the board. So this little sub-consume unit in the garage being supplied by a switch fuse which is running a 10 mil cable so this 10 mil here is isolated at the minute at the other end so what I'm going to do is because it's too short to neatly bring down I don't know if you saw earlier it was kind of strung across like that it looked a bit rubbish 
into the bottom of the meter and I could see the single insulated cable. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to stick some sort of whisker box there. Oh mate, that is a, I think it's dead. That's a beefy spider. Woo! Do not disappoint on the, go on, focus on it. Got it. Oh. Um, yeah, so it had single insulated cable and it looked pretty rubbish. So junction box there, I'm going to through crimp a bit more 10 mil, slightly bigger, bring that down neatly into this, uh, the top of this trunking and then into the meter, out of the meter into the consumer unit with proper tails. And like I say, that way, if they ever decide they want to put a proper supply in here or a bigger supply, they only have to bring it to the meter. They don't have to pull out the main switch. So it makes life a little bit easier for, for someone in years to come. I didn't flinch, you flinched. That's so unnecessarily cinematic. I love it. You're not doing a fan, you fraud. Six mil to do a fan? No, I'm not buying it, mate. Let's have a little look inside. There's no, there's no fan in here. That's the thing. So why am I going for big old six mil running to? There's nothing in here that I can reasonably say we need a six mil. Unless it goes into this, oh, unless it does that, I reckon it does that. Because it doesn't even work. But that one there does the shower. So we've already sussed that one, that one's wired in. If this is spare, that's great because I'm just going to cut the cable out because it's an absolute disaster. Oh, they're pretty new. But what on earth are they coming from then? What do you reckon, Nathan? Where are they coming from? Really, this is the problem. I think we've made a bit of a mess up here. More evidence that we're not perfect. Really, we would always EICR before we do anything. But this is such a small property, it's such a tiny little annex that we're changing bits around on. And they want to change the board regardless. So it's like, oh, well, we'll just start and figure it out as we go along. But I'm starting to feel like maybe that wasn't the best of moves. Because, yeah, it's just a bit of pain. I'm going to have my long lead. I've got a fan. I'm going to... Probably audio is going to be terrible because someone forgot my mic. Oh, that, was that you? That someone was me, yeah. Um, so, I'm going to clamp, clamp, I'm going to clamp this end on. I'm not actually worried about zero in it or anything because I don't... I'm not fussed about getting an accurate reading. I just literally want to see it, w where that cable's going. So I'm gonna whack my long lead in and run around, ouch, run around the property. Try and see if we can find the other end of that earth. Because nothing's going into an earth bar at the minute. So I'm hoping I can just like touch the screws of some fixing fittings. Just suss out where it's going. I'm not quite down to the property by the way, but like lives here is in South Africa so it's no mask. Maybe that could be going to that. So I'm gonna set it to um, R1 plus R2. That's the R2 lead. Probably not after the screw on this actually. Oh there they have to. Oh. That was quick. That was quick. Thank you, R2 method. You saved the day again, although really, if I'd have seen that, I probably could have worked better. I don't think it's doing anything, though. Let's see. So if it's not, again, I'm really inclined just to remove it. It's got written on it, fan supply, but I can't figure out why you'd need six mil for a domestic kitchen fan. Yeah, that's the one. So it goes in and it comes out, unless it, unless it comes out to these sockets, maybe. Let's see. Just uh, resistance, low. No, so it's not, well, not apparently going to there. Where is it going to then? Let's take a peek above, above the units. No, there's nothing above there. 
Well, if that's unverified, I'm just going to disconnect it, I think. Before I jump to conclusions, let's just see if we can spot where it's actually coming from. If we take it apart. So what I might do is leave the circuit inside the trunking and um, just put a blank plate here so that if they ever did need it or want it, they've got a cable rooted in the walls that they can use should they wish to. Yes, that's just going straight up unless it goes through the wall. Ah, oh, no, 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 no. Sorry, I said ah oh, too soon. But that six mil I think is defunct, so I'm going to remove it. I'm just not going to wire it in. That's cool. So that one. Let's just I'll label it up. Get the old brother label printer out. We'll do a little cable flag on that, labeling it as a spare. That's one down. Only a few more to go. This one, I think, that does the socket just there, so that's cool. That, this one is allowed to come into the board now. We'll let them in. I'm only pulling circuits into the board that I've identified. Now this one here, that one I believe goes to that light switch, but still I want to properly trace it before I bring it in. That one there, I haven't got a clue. So let's do this one next. If we, again, we'll just go for the earth because none of these are linked out. So that does the kitchen sockets, that cable. So that's cool. Um, let's see. Again, I'll just make it a radial because I've, I've checked and none of them are on rings. That's cool, that's cool. That can go onto the socket circuit. My friend, you've found your way into the consumer unit. No, you haven't. You're going to be extended. Once you're extended, then you've earned your way into the consumer unit, which are a little bit too short. So that one there is doing the boiler. So that, that's not on a ring, so it shouldn't it was on a ring before. So I'm just gonna stick that on its own little radial. I mean it only really needs like three amps, but I'll put it on I'll put it on a um, 16 or 20 amp, and then you've got a few spur there, which that's going to. So that's cool, that's one sorted. So I'll take that off because we don't want it going back on that ring. Well, we found the safe working load of the shelf. Um, yeah, glad we got that one done. That was that's one job finished. All the tools on the floor, they were just part of the test to find the, uh, the safe working limit. You gotta do these things. Shelf instant, which we're not gonna talk about. Um, we're doing quite well. I'm just gonna, now we've found the limit of the shelf, we'll just repair it for them. Here we go, look, Michael's glove. More than just a Sparky, what Sparky's put up shelves as well, huh? They don't have any that can. We can. There we go, our workbench is back. Um, I didn't actually end up having to extend this, I've managed to make it reach. So I'm just bringing it down and in, um, into the meter, out the meter, in. I've started doing the board if you want to come around. And then I just need to get my little ferrule crimper, um, and then I'm gonna bootlace for all those bad boys or bad girls or bad persons um, and stick those into there and then that is managed to narrow all of these circuits down so got the shower the cooker whatever one wasn't being used so we just I've written on it not used switch in the kitchen um, we've got the kitchen sockets and then the rest of the house sockets and then the lighting is gonna be a lot more fun because I have absolutely no clue what is going on with that and we've got the singles cable, but they go off in different directions. Oh yeah, I forgot, we've also got the armoured cable as well. Can't forget that. Um, I'll just scooch everything along one and get that in, no problem. How do you guys feel about, because I'm kind of mixed opinion, part of me wants to, because I know this has been earthed the other side, and you don't have to earth it both sides. In fact, you're kind of advised not to earth it both sides. Um, I, I would think, if we were stripped that back, put a bit of heat shrink over where the armoring ends and just brought the flex in, that'd be okay. Cause I don't really have a convenient place that's solid to mount it onto. Unless I bring it down like this, that's what I was kind of toying with the idea of. Bring it down like that and stick a gland 
pushed into the side, but I'm kind of preferring the idea of either glanding it into the end cap, but that's not going to be very solid, or just bringing it through the end cap in a stuffing band, heat shrinking around the armors. Armors? The armored. Armors. Ring. And then uh, down and in. I'm kind of preferring that idea, if I'm being honest. But I don't know. I feel like also. I'm going to put my stuff in. Also, if I saw that on an EICR, I'm thinking, what would I think? Would I think that they've done it for a reason, or would I think that's just a bit of a rough move? And do you know what? I can't really decide. So, oh, actually, yeah, I've got a different idea for that. Yeah, I can't really decide. So I'm going to have a little, um, have a little think about that. Let me know in the comments what I should do, even though the job will be long since done by then. I'll still bear it in mind for next time. So we've managed to find the fault, so I don't know if we recorded that or not, but I had all the, um, the RCBOs were, were not coming on properly. And basically all the circuits have all been like combined and mishmashed across the times. So this here, which was up there somewhere, was a tower rail circuit. We had a, we had a, this four mil, whatever it is here, went from the consumer unit over to a switch to the other side of the kitchen from there to here into this junction box and there it joined onto the ring <laughs> and when it joined onto the well I say the ring it's an incomplete ring so it joined onto the broken ring and then kind of split off like a bit of a spider's web so I've just I've just disconnected it all and the customer's fine with that I've said it's not safe um, so I've disconnected that at the consumer unit I've cut it I've disconnected all the other legs so all we'll have to do is when we come back she's ordered a new um, towel rail the lady um, so when we come back we will will fit the towel rail and I'll just run a new leg from the consumer unit and I'll probably just do sort of socket here and maybe a socket there or more likely just a fused spur. So the socket here to power the garage roller, roller door motor and um, a switch fuse spur down there to power the um, power the towel rail that's going to be the other side of the wall. Personally I don't really think you need a they had a little pull switch isolator up here for it. But I don't really think you need a pull switch isolator for a tower rail, just a few spares. Perfect, perfectly sufficient, especially when you've got a tower rail that has like a temperature and on off adjustment on the side of it. I found one, another one of the faults. It was a borrowed live. So, usually you see borrowed neutrals, not that often that you see borrowed lives. Basically, um, yeah, one of the rings, one of the radials rather, combined with another one. The supposed ring, which was actually broken, was combined with another radial basically. So, what I've done is, I've just put them on the same circuit. So, you've kind of just got a 20 amp breaker with the three legs it's not ideal but it's just a realistic way to deal with when you've got borrowed conductors within a circuit all of these ones that are left are all lighting so i'm going to slowly work my way through the lighting i'll be honest i don't think it's likely i'm going to finish today just because there's been so many problems um so many little issues it's not been by any stretch of the imagination a straightforward swap and i've spied a few more bits as well like i just spotted by the meter You've got coming out of the meter into a Henley block, these piddly little single insulated cables um, powering the whole house. So they're gonna have to be swapped. Um, and yeah, there's just lots of little non-compliances that we're finding. So, um, yeah, bear with it. I think it's tidy up time, my friends. Because today has been a pain the behind because every, every single blooming circuit had problems with it and because it was such a teeny tiny little garage well a teeny tiny little annex as you've seen it was just like ah yeah we'll just test it kind of as we go usually do an EICR before as standard always lesson learned but today is another lesson learned even if it's a tiny little annex do an EICR before you start changing the board Again, it's not really a problem because like the customer is one, lovely, and two, 
kind of preempted that there might be slight issues, um, and as such, is, isn't really surprised and doesn't mind that we've got to come back another day to carry on. But I've like I've worked non-stop. I've got like the, some, most of the containment done. The containment was actually the, the easy part. And wired in the board, got the board wired in, but it's just all the faults, all the circuits mished up together. But I think a lot of it I'm just going to rewire. I'm not going to bother faffing with it. So I think faffing with it is going to take me more time, and it's not even going to be a good job. Like I can't, can't guarantee there's not more junction boxes under the floors or above the ceilings. So I'm just, I'm just going to forget it. I hope you've enjoyed watching it though. It's probably a lot more entertaining for you guys watching it. But hey ho, that is just the way it goes sometimes. No big deal. I hope you've enjoyed watching it anyway. I think Jordan's over there with a nice cushy job. <laughs> At least his job seems to have gone well. There's nothing really to go wrong with his. He's just hanging in some new conduit. It's nice, I'm, I'm fairly happy with it. But you know, it's like, I feel like I'm, I'm polishing the turd a little bit. It's like, no matter what I do, it's not gonna look really good because you can have all of this. Really what I'd like to do is just rip out the whole lot, do it all again, and make it all look nice. But you can't always do that. You have to work with what you're given. But often on on YouTube, you only see like the best of, like the really good days where everything's smooth sailing, it's super neat and tidy because everything gets ripped out and done new, or you've got hours to tidy it up. But sometimes this is just the reality of it. This is what, if you become an electrician, it's going to be like you work to a certain standard then it's surrounded by slightly lower standards um, and issues and uh, it's, it's, it's a job where when you get a phone call saying what time are you going to be home for dinner <laughs> often the answer is I have not got a clue it completely depends on about a million different factors um, and that is the life of a sparky um, and unfortunately, probably about as exciting as it's going to get today. You can tell it's a bad day when it's messy. I hate working in mess. Anyone that watches the channel knows I am not a messy sparky, but I've been a real messy pup today, a big time messy pup. And that's not okay. I'm going to tell myself off, actually. I'm probably not going to let myself have a beer tonight. Um, but yeah, we're going to come back with a fresh mindset, a fresh approach, and we're just gonna blitz it out, is what we're gonna do. Um, thankfully, as well, no one's living in there, and no one's gonna be living in there for quite some time, so there's no urgent rush to get the power back on, like the customer's call, with it being off for a few weeks even, she's not in a rush, she just wants it done as soon as we can, basically. So, that's pretty cool. It would, if, uh, if there was a customer living there, it would have been super stressful, but also, if that was the case, we probably wouldn't have approached the job how we've approached it, if that makes sense. Like we would have made sure it was all good before we started pulling things apart. I will bid thee farewell. I hope you all have um, wonderful arches and aprils. And whenever you're watching this, I hope that, I hope it's wonderful. Other than a couple of the commenters, I hope you I hope you have good April and marches, but not wonderful April and marches. Not until you're a little bit kinder. When you're a little bit kinder, then I'll wish you a wonderful April and March. I'm not just gonna wish them out willy-nilly like some kind of wishful maniac. Um, so, yeah, stay safe everybody, and um, I'll see you on the next one. Lots of love.